Hello, my name's Dren. I currently live in Croxley Green, which is northwest London way, and I have a plan to sell up, buy a boat, and go sailing the world for a while. Now, unfortunately, as we're in tier five lockdown at the moment, the project's on hold. So instead, what I'm gonna do, I still plan to make a video every day, but I'm gonna make a video about some random subject, and I hope you find that interesting enough to stick with me until we get back onto the project and do some boating. I have a bit of a treat for you as a friend has recorded his own version of the Liberator theme song. I'd like to thank Paul for his version of the Liberator Project theme song. Uh, reminds me a bit of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, using the banjo like that, but that's, uh, that's very appropriate for this channel. Now, when I asked him if he'd like me to promote his band or web page, he said he'd rather remain anonymous. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> I respect his wishes and I do appreciate the time and effort he's gone to to make that video for me, so thank you very much, Paul. Now, um, if you want to record your own version of the, uh, the theme song, that will be fantastic. Please email it to me at the link below. What are the requirements for a good donor car to be easily converted to make a good amphibious vehicle? Well, for me in this project, the first thing is got to be cheap. I mean, the donor car and any additional parts I need must come in at less than £10,000. That's all the budget I can allocate to this particular part of the project. Um, the other thing, uh, the vehicle must be as light as possible. And that's because the Liberator can only carry about a tonne of weight on the back. So if it's getting far above that, that's going to be a big problem for me. And the other thing, it must have the right basic shape. That's never going to be ideal, as boats are long and thin, and cars are just too square to make a decent boat. Cars are streamlined, but their aerodynamics are designed to push the car down onto the road to help with traction. Now that's exactly the opposite of what you want from a boat, where you want it to actually lift out of the water to reduce friction. Uh, I'll talk a little about hull types because there's dozens of hull types and keel types. Now, uh, clearly an amphibious vehicle can't have a fixed keel because you'd need to cut a trough down the middle of the road so it could drive anywhere, but it could have a retractable keel. Now, I'd rather not go that route because um, it's a lot of aggravation, but also I don't think it's necessary. I mean, that would be necessary on a sailboat and this is a motor launch, so uh, I, I don't think it's necessary. But I will, I will prove that when I do some model tests uh, later in the project. Now, a catamaran has a, coal, has a hull <laughs> like this. For a speedboat, you want them to lift up out the water at speed to reduce the drag. So their holes are designed to give some lift and they look more like this. A car's got a pretty flat bottom. So as it goes over the road, you get something called the ground effect and that helps suck the car down and gives it more traction. Now they'd be flatter still if it wasn't for the need for ground clearance and to uh, you know get over curbs and speed bumps. Now, if you float a car in water, what happens is the uh, without the weight of the car, the wheels dangle down. Now, uh, fresh water is about 750 times more dense than air, so it's 750 times harder to punch your way through than it is in water than it is air. And seawater is even more dense. It's about 800 times harder to move something through seawater than it is uh, just moving it through the air a car. So um, if the wheels were dangling down, that uh, extra um, drag would absolutely kill the performance of a boat. So um, the donor car needs to have space above the wheels so that I can raise them out of the water, either lift them up into the bodywork or actually move them at an angle, but they've got to get out of the water stream. And uh, you know, um, when they're, you know, when they're, when the car's in water and the wheels are not being used, they just got to get out of the way. Cars tend to have the engine in the front for ease of calling and layout, which makes them front heavy compared to a boat, where you want the engine towards the stern, the rear, 
and the bow, the front, light so it lifts up when the boat moves through the water. A mid or rear engine car would have much better balance for a boat, otherwise you'd need to extend the front of the car with one or two metres of flotation just to offset the weight of the engine so the front lifted. Now there's always going to be a big compromise between having a vehicle that's a good boat or a good car because there's different engineering reasons behind both and they're not compatible. But what I'm looking for is a reasonable car that's got a sort of boat-like possibility about it. Um, it would also be a good idea if the car was over 40 years old because in the UK that means it's MOT exempt and uh, you know there might be um, problems getting it through an MOT, there might be uh, issues with inspection. So let's just uh, go for a car that doesn't need that and that makes life a lot easier. Um, also older cars have chassis. So it's easier to strip away the uh, bodywork without the car actually just folding in half. And it's better if the car's got fiberglass panels than steel panels. Older cars are generally uh, easier to work on than modern cars, uh, just because they're simpler. And um, to get the car out of the water when it arrives on shore, this is one of the few times it'd be better if the car was front wheel drive rather than rear wheel drive, because it's got to pull itself up a ramp. I mean, ideally, you'd want a car that was four wheel drive so it could, uh, you know, drive on beaches and uh, just generally, you know, be a better all terrain vehicle. Now, um, for a boat to carry people uh, to ferry things to and from the Liberator, it would be better to have four seats rather than two. However, it was only going to be a few minute trip. I mean, the, uh, the additional two seats in the rear don't have to be very uh, large or comfortable. People have only got to sit in them for a few, a few minutes. So um, also a hatchback car would be useful so I can carry, uh, you know, ease of carrying items to and from the uh, to, from the marina. And it's probably best if it's a convertible because that makes more headroom. And also if the boat's sinking, it's easier to get out of. So um, anyway, those are some of the basic requirements for a donor car. I probably missed loads of things, but they'll turn up in time. And you know, I'm not going to find the ideal car. I'm just going to have to compromise and uh, pick uh, pick a suitable vehicle and go from there. So tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'll talk about um, probable cars that could be converted. I'll talk about ones that I've considered, and then I'll give you the top 10 vehicles that would be easiest, in my opinion, to convert into a boat. Anyway, if you've enjoyed today, please like, share and subscribe. Link below. Now, I'd like to play you out with Paul X's version of the theme song. Good night. Thank you.